Right, so let's put the solution together now from the workings that we did, the four workings we did, and the other questions or other statements made by the examiner in the question. We're going to rely on that and then deal with the question. Now, since our tax, or we are told that tax is paid immediately and the project life is five, it means our time will also be what? Five. But assuming project was to, uh, tax was supposed to be paid one year in arrears, then we would have added one period to it to make it six. But it's not so, so let's go about it. Now, so the first thing we want to bring is the sales. So remember from our workings, the sales. The first year, 2000, 2140, 2290. 2,450 and then 2,622. So that's our sales value. Then the next thing we bring is the material cost. The material cost from our workings, if you remember, 864. Remember, that is an outflow. So we put it into brackets. 933, an outflow. We put it into brackets. 1,008. 1,088. And then the last thing is 1175. All these are costs, so we put them in brackets. Then we bring our labor cost. Labor cost, if you remember our workings, we have 735, also a cost, 772, 810, 851. 893. So all these are outflows. Now, if we get or uh, we do the arithmetic for these, usually we are supposed to get what we call contribution, okay? Because sales minus variable cost is contribution. Now, assuming there were there was anything like fixed cost that the company or some additional fixed cost that the company is going to be incurring then we would have what? Included it, then we would get a net profit before we charge the tax. But in this question, there is nothing like additional fixed cost, additional increment, incremental, sorry, fixed cost that a company is going to be incurring. So our contribution would just be the same as the net cash flows. And so that is going to be, when we add together, we get 401 here, 435 there, 472 here, 511 here, and then 554 here. So this is our contribution or our net cash flows. Now once we have the contribution of the net cash flows, the next thing we do is to calculate the tax, okay? Remember the tax is at 25%, okay? So 25% of this, that gives us approximately 100 it's payment, then 109, payment, 118, payment, 128, and then the last one is 139. So that is the tax that we are supposed to pay. Then for the tax we are paying, we're going to be receiving capital allowance. Now remember the capital allowance is coming from the workings we did, so workings 4, this is coming from workings 1, working is two, working is three. So this is working is four. Capital allowance will be an addition. So 113 here, 84 there, 63 here, 47. And remember what happened in the final year, 107, it was an outflow in relation to that. Then what we do is to bring the cost of the assets now. The cost of the asset will always come under year zero and that is one eight and red. And the scrap value of the asset, that will come under the fifth year at the end of the project and we are told it's one million, so that is thousand. Then remember, we were told also in the question about working capital. So we're gonna bring that. Remember I told you that working capital is not incorporated for tax purposes. So the working capital we are told is at the start of the project, so year zero, Working capital is 2 and remember this is also year zero and outflow. Now, then I mentioned that 
For working capital, any working capital incurred, we're going to what, assume that it is going to be retained or, yes, it's going to be received back at the end of the project. So this 200 as an outflow here becomes an inflow in the fifth year. So that's same 200. So these are the things you need to understand about the question and that is all about it. So let's do it. Let's get our figure there for the next cash flows. Now we will call this, we, we have to call this net operating, net operating cash flows. So the next, this will be net cash flows. So this negative 2000, this will give us a positive of 14, 14. This will give us 410. This will give us 417. That will give us 430. And then the last one certainly will give us 1508. So now that we have the net cash flows, what do we do? What we do is to now bring the discount factor. Remember, it's at a rate of 10%, right? So we go to our discount table and we read that. So we go to our present value table, 10% the first year. Remember, year zero is always 1-1. One, one. Sorry, it's not supposed to be in brackets. Year one. 10% will be 0.99, 0 0.909. Year 2, no 0.862, sorry, 826. Year 3, no 0.751. Year 4, no 0.7, no 0.683. And then year 5, no 0.621. So now that we have these, what we do is to get our present value. So present value, this will still be negative 2,000. This will give us a figure of 376. This will give us a figure of 339. This will give us a figure of 313. This will give us 297. And that will be 936. Okay? Right. Then what we want to now find out is net present value. How do we get a net present value? by adding the present value. So this is minus, plus, 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 plus. So when we do the arithmetic for that, we're going to get a present value of positive 258,000 dollars. Now, so this project is positive. So since it is positive 258 thousand dollars, what do we do? We accept the project. Okay, we continue with the project. The business has to accept the project. Why? Because the wealth of the shareholders, all other things being equal, will be increased by what? 258 thousand dollars. So this is what we talk about in relation to. This is what you have to understand in relation to the net present value. I hope it is a simple area. So that's it about it. Remember the three way we did first, second, third. Then we get our cash flow, we charge our tax, capital allowance was the fourth workings. We will bring it. Then the cost of the assets will come. Working capital, the scrap value of the assets, don't forget. Working capital is in the question. Remember, it's an outflow at the start but becomes an inflow at the end of the project. If this working capital was in the third year as an outflow, it will still come in the fifth year as an inflow. It is something that you have to understand that at whatever point, working capital will always be assumed that it will be received at the end of the project. Unless otherwise the examiner says something else. So if the examiner says something else about working capital, then you go by that. But if it is just working capital requirements over the life of the project, remember, at the end of the project, all those capital requirements will come in as a cash inflows to the company. So this is what you have to understand in relation to the net present value. Now, when it comes to uh, financial management level two or management accounting level two, that is how far the examiner can go about NPV in relation to the examination. Apart from this, we will be looking at the sensitivity analysis later on in the, in, in the lessons then in advanced financial management, 
the examiner will not play it safe with you like this in advanced financial management. What the examiner is going to do is to bring in other things where you will be calculating this discounting factor. So the examiner could ask you to first calculate the discounting factor with a couple of scenarios that the examiner is going to give you. Then you will calculate the discount factor. Then you, before you put down this schedule because probably the company is going to invest in the new industry, invest or diversification or invest in another country. In that case, the net present value calculation will follow the same order but the techniques are going to be slightly changing and we'll look at that one as we segregate between the advanced financial management and then the level two financial management. Right. So the next method, which is closely related to the uh, to NPV, is what we call the internal rate of return. Now you see, the internal rate of return simply assumes that uh, the cash inflows that are coming in on the project, okay, the cash inflows that are coming in from the project, that is these sales coming in from the project. <coughs> should be reinvested at the company's cost of capital should be reinvested at the company's cost of capital but the reality is that that is not what is done but at the internal rate of return that is the assumption we're going to be using that the positive mpv project that should be undertaken the income that will be derived from these positive mpv projects will be reinvested at the company's cost of capital and i've already introduced you to internal rate of return about the formula when we were doing the calculation of the cost of debt. So I would not uh, write a formula down again. All I'll tell you about is the decision rule. The decision rule is that if the discount or if the internal rate of return is greater, okay, than the company's cost of capital, what do we do? We accept the project. If the internal rate of return is lower than the company's cost of capital, what do we do? It means that we reject the project. So it is about uh, taking the NPV to another level, taking it to consideration. So this is where we're going to be doing our trial and error stuff again. So as always, start at 10%. When you start at 10%, that serves as the basis to help you to be able to decide whether you should increase or you should reduce. Now, so in, in calculating this, we're still going to be referring, referring to our question that we started with, okay? The question on project one and project two so that we can calculate our NPV in relation to that. Now, so using the same question, remember in the NPV of the uh, first one, what we did now, I'm not going to really uh, spend time on those here. I'm just going to be using the first project as a guinea pig for us to go through it. Now, if you remember project one, we calculated uh, at the... NPV of project one, we had 142, okay? MPV of project one, 142, using the discount rate of 15%. Now, if it is positive, what it means is that the discount rate was too small, so we're going to what? Increase it, okay? If it is positive, it means it was too small, so we increase it. If it is negative, it means it was too high, so we reduce it. So, it means that we already have our, you know, you know that, let me put that formula here. You know that our IRR equals a plus NPVA over NPVA minus NPVB out B minus A, all right? This is the formula. So from the workings we did, we've already calculated the NPVA. So our NPVA is 142 positive, 
and our A is 15%. So we're going to increase the rate, okay, so that we get a B. So we can increase it to 20% and then find out ourselves what we need. So we're going to have the time there. We go have the cash flows there. We go have the discounts back down. So maybe this time around, let's make it 20%. We have increased it, so we get a present value. So in the year zero, the cost of the asset is five, five, six. We put that into bracket. Remember I told you discount factor, no problem. The first year is going to be the same figure. Then from year one to year five, we are told that the cash inflows is 200,000. Annuity, so you go to the annuity table and we read 20% on the annuity table for five years. And that is 2.991. When we multiply, we're going to get 598. In the fifth year, the scrap value 56, and that is going to be read on the present value table 0.402. And that is going to give us 23. And so the next present value B is going to be plus 65. Now, it's still positive though, but no problem, but you realize that the positive has what? Reduced. So what do we do now? Simple. What we do is now calculate the internal rate of return for that project. The A is the 15% plus NPV A142 over 142 minus 65 into bracket 20% minus 15%. When we punch the arithmetic, remember how you're going to punch this. Okay? It's the whole of this plus this. Okay? So when we do the arithmetic, we're going to get 24.2%. Right? Now, you realize that the internal rate of return here is greater than the company's cost of capital. Okay? It's greater than the company's cost of capital. So what do we do? We accept the project. Now, the question we just solved in relation to the NPV, like a huge question we solved, where we got the NPV to be 258000 we could use the same question to calculate the internal to you we could use the internal rate of return formula to appraise this project as well. So in this case, we use the discount factor of 10% and we got a positive NPV. So all you would do is that it is the same schedule, but the only thing that will be changing is the discount factor. So from 10%, you could increase the discount factor to 20% read the rates, then you now calculate the present value, then you now calculate the internal rate of return. So I'm going to leave that to you as an assignment. Do that and send it to me and let me know how you do it and then I will now see whether you understand what we did in relation to that. So these are what I refer to as the basic methods that are used in relation to the NPV project. So remember we spoke about the accounting rates of return, the payback period, the dis discounted payback period, we spoke about the net present value, and then we spoke about the internal rates of return. If you look at it closely, we paid close attention and more emphasis on the net present value because this is where the examiner is most likely going to get you at. And you have to make sure that you understand how these things are done in relation to that. Okay. Right, so that is all about the basic methods, and I will see you in the next lesson as we talk about other issues, about uh, inflation, about capital allowance, and then using the Fisher formula to change from the money rate and also from the, uh, from the money rate to the real rate or from the real rate to the money or nominal rate. So I'll see you in the next lesson as we continue with our journey on investment appraisal.